Hello all, in this video we use Stata to run our first rig lessons. Let's again use Stata's auto dataset as the example dataset for the reason that this dataset is always available for everyone. You can use the dataset by typing sysuse auto. The dataset includes a quite limited cross-section of different car models. However, despite the small size, this dataset is excellent for learning purposes. There are variables such as weight, fuel consumption and several other car-specific variables. There is also a dummy variable that indicates the country of origin. This variable foreign gets the value of 1 when the car is not made in the USA. If the car is made in the USA, the value is 0. Let's use these three variables, mileage, weight and foreign, to build a regression model that explains a car's fuel consumption. First, let's draw a scatter graph of fuel consumption and weight. On the x-axis is the independent variable, which is the car weight. The dependent variable on the y-axis is miles per gallon. As can be expected, the relation is visibly decreasing. This implies that weight decreases mile age. One could also approximate the regression coefficient quite well from the graph. Nonetheless, we don't have to do that because the ordinary least squares method finds the mathematically most optimal regression coefficient for the distribution between these two variables. In this case, being optimal means that the error term that is, the distance of the regression line from the actual observation is on average the smallest. That is, the fit of the model is the best. Mathematically, ordinary least squares is a minimization problem. If you wish, you can include the regression line in a scatter graph using a simple command. After the scatter graph command, type space and two vertical bars. Again, after a space, type L fit like linear fit, followed by the dependent and independent variables MPG and weight. Stata now prints a figure that includes the previous scatter graph and the regression line. The regression coefficient is the slope of this line. The marginal change in the dependent variable when the independent variable changes by one unit. In this case, we really would benefit if we multiply the weight variable by, for example, 100 or 1000, because the unit is now pound. But roughly speaking, if a car's weight increases by 1000 pounds, its mile age decreases by maybe about 6 miles per, per gallon. This means that the regression coefficient or the slope is minus 6 divided by 1000, which, which means 0 0.006, I mean minus 0 0.006. In Stata, regressions are run using the command regress, which abbreviates to reg. The syntax is reg y variable and x variables. The dependent variable has to be the first variable, but other than that, the order does not matter. Let's first run a univariate regression model where the dependent variable is mile age and the independent variable is weight. Type reg mpg weight and press enter and Stata prints the regression results. The result window has now quite a lot of information. In the upper right corner there are the coefficients of determination that tell 
how many percents of the variance in the dependent variable the regression model is able to predict. In this case, one variable explains the variance very well because the coefficient of determination is 0.65 or 65%. In the upper left corner, there are middle steps of the OLS. Probably these are included here only for cosmetic purposes. At least for us, they are useless, except that one could calculate the coefficients of determination by dividing the explained sum of squares by the total sum of squares. However, the most important figures are found in the lower half of the result window. The dependent variable is shown on the highest row of the variable name column. Here it is MPG. The next columns show the estimated coefficients and their standard errors. By dividing the coefficients by the standard error, one gets the T statistic. The P value is a very important statistic. It is calculated from the T statistic and it tells whether the coefficient is statistically significant or not. In other words, it tells whether the relation between the two variables is significant enough when the deviation and the sample size are accounted for. The null hypothesis, that is the base hypothesis, is by default that the coefficient is zero. T-test tells if the coefficient is statistically significantly different from zero. The p-value has to be smaller than the level of significance for the relation to be statistically significant. If the level of significance is 5%, the p-value has to be lower than 0.05 or 5%. In that case, one would take a 5% risk of rejecting a null hypothesis that is true. 5% is a common choice for the level of significance, but in economics, 10% is also used. If our level of significance was 10%, the p-value would have to be lower than 0.1. In this case, the p-value is so low that Stata does not even show any other decimals than zeros. Therefore, car weight is significantly related to its mile age. Let's add another independent variable into the regression. Foreign is a dummy variable that indicates a foreign that is a non-American car. It gets the value of 1 if a car is not made in the USA and the value of 0 when the car is American. Weight is left in the regression as a control variable. Therefore, the coefficient for the variable foreign is interpreted as the difference in fuel consumption between American and non-American cars when the cars have equal weight. If the regression model included only the variable foreign, the regression would be the same as a mean test between the two groups. In any case, the result for the variable foreign in our regression is insignificant. It can be seen in the p-value that is more than 0.1 or 0.05. It is 0.13. Therefore, the null hypothesis of the coefficient being zero is not rejected. This result can be interpreted in such a way that foreign cars do not consume more or less than American cars when the cars weigh equally much. And that's it for this time. The OLS is a powerful tool that definitely should be included in an empirical researcher's toolkit. We will return to regressions in another video that discusses using logs as variables in regressions. Until next time, have fun working with Stata.